Hello everyone, welcome to another grade eight lesson. The topic that we are focusing on is factorization, specifically factorizing using the highest common factor, right? The highest common factor of a set of numbers is the largest number that divides exactly into each of them. Thus, the highest common factor of 3, 9, and 27 is 3 because it is the greatest number that is a factor of each of the number. The highest common factor of a set of algebraic terms is the highest expression that is a factor of each of the given terms. The highest common factor of a set of algebraic terms is obtained by simply taking the lowest power of each element that is a common to each of the following terms and multiplying them. For example, the highest common factor of x squared times y squared and x to the third power times y to the third power and x to the fourth power and y to the fourth power is x squared times y to the third power. As you notice here, when you look at each term, each term has x raised to some power, but the one with the lowest degree is this one because it is raised to the second power, right? So you would take that out. And when you look at the y terms, each of them is raised to some power, but the one with the lowest power is y to the third. So you take them out and multiply them together. And that would give you the highest expression that is a factor of each of these terms. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at some more examples for you to develop a better understanding. So example one, you're asked to find the HCF of each of these terms, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to observe each term individually, and we're going to look for the term with the lowest power. So the first term here, as you notice, is color coded. So we have a squared, b to the fourth power, c to the third power. For the second term, we have a to the third power, b to the second power, c to the fourth power. For the third term, we have a to the fourth power, b to the third power, c to the fifth power, and d to the fourth power. So, so therefore, the HCF, the HCF for this, this term is going to be when we look at all the a's, right, we know that this one is raised to the second power, this one is raised to the third power, this one is raised to the fourth power. The one with the lowest degree is this one, so we need that one, so it's going to be a squared. Then we look at the b term, b is common to all three, right, so we're going to look at the powers. So this one has four, this one has two, and this one has three. So this one is the one that is with the lowest power. So it's going to be B square. Then when we look, we see C in all three of them. We're looking for the one with the lowest power. So this one has a power of four. This one has a power of five. And this one has a power of three. So this one is the lowest one. So we need C to the third power. When we look, there is nothing else that is common. We have a d to the, the fourth power here, but it is not common to all three terms. So therefore, the HCF is equal to a squared times b squared times c squared. All right? So that is how you would obtain the, the highest common factor there for those um, algebraic terms. Now let's look at example two, right? We are given x squared, right? Times y to the third power, times z 
to the fifth power, right? And also we given x to the third power here, uh, times y to the third power times z to the third power. And we given another term, which is x to the fourth, or y to the fourth and z to the fifth. Now, in order to obtain the, the HCF of this, these term, again, we're going to pick out all the common terms. So we know that x is common to everything. So we're looking at the degree of the power now. So we have x is raised to the third power here, to the second power here, and to the fourth power here. So we want the one that has the lowest power, and that's this one, which is the first one. So it's going to be x to the second power, right? Then we're going to look at y. y is common to all three terms, right? That we're looking at the degree of the power. We have this one being to the third. This one is also to the third, and this one is to the fourth. So we're going to just pick the one with the lowest power, so it's going to be y to the third. Then we look at z. z is common to all three terms. So we're going to look at the powers. We have five here, we have five here, and we have four here. So this one is the one that we need. So it's going to be z to the fourth, All right? So remember now, the HCF of these three algebraic terms would be x squared times y to the third power times z to the fourth power, All right? So what we're going to do, we're going to look at another example, right? So here, when we look at the third example, we're given um, 10p to the fourth power, q to the third power, and here we're given another term, which is five times p squared, q squared. And we're given a third term, which is us 15 times p to the third power times q to the fifth power. So note that each of these terms has what is called a coefficient. So in order to determine the HCF of these algebraic terms, we need to look at the coefficient first. So we're going to look at 10, 5, and 15. What is the highest number that can divide both all three numbers here? The highest number that can divide all three numbers without leaving a remainder. That would be five, right? So the first number would be five because five can go into 10 two times, five can go into itself one time, and five can go into 15 three times. Now we're going to look at the variables. We have P and P is common to all three terms, right? So the next step is to look at the degree of the power. We have P here is being raised to the fourth power. And we have P here is being raised to the second power. And we have P here is being raised to the third power. So the one with the lowest power is P squared. So we're going to write it here. Then now we're looking at Q. So we have Q here is raised to the third power, Q is raised to the second power, and Q is raised to the fifth power here. The one with the lowest one is Q squared. So we're going to write it here. So if you notice, therefore, the HCF of these algebraic terms would be five times P squared, Q squared, right? Now we have a fraction here. Does the principle change? No, it doesn't change. It is the same thing. So what we're going to do, we're going to determine the, the highest common factor by looking at each part individually. So we're going to look at the numerator first. So note here, we have an a square here. We have a a to the third power in the second one, and we have an a to the fourth power in the third one. So a is common to all three terms. So we're looking for the one that has the lowest power, right? And the one that has the lowest power is this first one here, which is a squared. So we're going to write that here. When we look at b, we have b being common to all three terms again. So we have b squared. We have b to the third power. And this b by itself means that b is raised to the first power, right? 
So which one has the lowest power? It's just B. So we'll take that out. Right? Is there any common term between the numerators? No, we have a D, but it is not common to all three. So we finish with the numerator, put back our bar, and then we're going to look at the denominator. So we're looking at the coefficient first. So we have nine, we have three, and we have 27. What is the highest number that can divide each of these numbers without leaving a remainder? That would be three, right? So three is the common factor between all three numbers there. Note that C is common to both and we want the one with the lowest power. So here, C here would be the one with the lowest power because C by itself is C to the power of one. So we'd write it here. So therefore, the HCF would be A, squ A squared times B all over three C, all right? And that is how you determine the highest common factor of algebraic terms. Now, to ensure that you understand, you are now going to pause the video and try. So if you notice here, you are asked to determine the highest common factor of each of the following set of algebraic terms, right? So yes, the solution for the first one would be a squared, b squared, c squared. For your second one, the solution would be x times y to the third power times z to the fourth power. And for the third problem, your solution would be 3p to the fourth, q to the third. And for the last one, the HCF, which is your solution, would be R squared times S all over 4C.